Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where you can watch games and practice game design, and we're back with Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. Uh, last we left off, we are in a Pokemon-style battle of who has the best daughter. <laughs> you were Daisy. I was Daisy? I'm Brian. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, I... That's my girl! <laughs> Amanda, get in there. Okay, okay. Cyrus's or Cyrus's HP is 80. Brian's is 80. Oh, good match. Ah, okay. So, brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow! Congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. <laughs> Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, we lose 15. All right, so we have 65, they have 70. Do we brag again? I want to see what the item? items are. Grade card, band-aid. Spelling bee photo, child art. <laughs> <laughs> you unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing in, of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. <laughs> Cute! <laughs> This isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding onto it. Brian loses 10 <laughs> HP. You regain 20. Ah, nice. so items are healing. Usually, I'm sure. <clears throat> Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president, too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. Ooh, ah. Oh, we're still doing pretty good. Rag. Yeah. <clears throat> Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. <laughs> it's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. A canoe! Wow. That's, I mean, that's intense. <clears throat> oh, we're taking it out on our next weekend. How is that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, we're still in the lead. Can't switch to hunters. Amanda's your only daughter. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Yeah, take that. Brian. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teacher about having her skip a grade. <laughs> Even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. You lose 20 HP. Oh my god. Ooh, shit. Damn it, Brian. Should we use an item? <laughs> Band-Aids. I feel like <laughs> that's a trap item. I'm gonna see what it does. With a flourish, you produce a Band-Aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. What are you doing, Dad? Being protective parent. Anyone would agree it's an unusual gesture. Oh, no. You lose 10 HP. Dang it, I knew it. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy. <laughs> Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. <laughs> you lose 10 HP. Okay, you're still you're still uh, alive. He's killing no, me. No, 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 you gotta use... Ah, oh, no. Oh. A few months back, Amanda started vol volunteering at the homeless shelter in our old neighborhood. Ooh. Brian loses 10 HP. You don't say. She should oh, talk to Daisy. Nice. She actually helped organize a food bank here in Maple Bay. Yeah. Oh, I actually I just said yeah. your line. Sorry. Yeah, Amanda, I'm sure we could find something for you to do. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Ah, why did he have to insult? add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? <laughs> 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 I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? <laughs> yeah, we live in that uh, cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. Huh. What a coincidence. That's where we live, too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? <laughs> what a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. 
Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. tow. <laughs> Do you get the feeling he was trying to one-up us? <laughs> trying and succeeding? I can't believe that kid's only ten! What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. <laughs> Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's too, not too late to minor in horse creative. <laughs> <laughs> too close to the truth, Dad. Let us never speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Kingsley. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a, a bit more, enjoying the day. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee shop! Yeah, I gotta get my hands on a nice cup of the old bean juice or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. So I feel like the little Pokemon challenge was sort of... It was the first real challenge that the game presented to us. I wonder if it was supposed to be like an inconsequential challenge to introduce us to the concept of how we will be challenged. Yeah, so far it doesn't feel like it had much of a point, mm -hmm. and it was like a little longer than it needed to be. Yeah, and it didn't, I don't, I mean, this is probably all behind the scenes, right? Because they have probably huge, gra like, charts of grids of, like, characters' relationship values and how they all perceive us and how Amanda feels about us and Brian and all that stuff. So, like, it could have modified that, <coughs> and it's just not apparent to us yet. Uh -huh. um, or... And, and maybe it did that just on a minor level to the point where it's not irreversible, right? Like yeah. Brian's not going to think that we're a terrible father just from that one encounter. Right. Um, but yeah, I think it was at least good at introducing us to an interesting challenge. Yeah. We walked down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place in the corner. Yeah. Man, this is such convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would you go somewhere else and drink coffee when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? My man. <laughs> <laughs> at least when I'm home with some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my personal zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility <laughs> that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now, you, now you're that, that jerk who left their mug? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> we walk inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge around the well-worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Oh. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? Uh, what's with the name? Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. <laughs> but people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. <laughs> 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 so what it'll be I scan the chalkboard menu and immediately and am immediately overwhelmed I'll have a uh... Godspeed you black coffee <laughs> I oh my god they're all like name off of your artist <laughs> that's pretty hipster <laughs> a classic I don't get it it's a uh, pun Godspeed you, Black Emperor, is a really amazing and influential, influential progressive rock band known for their sweeping soundscapes, and I'm doing the thing again, but coming right up. And for you? I'll have a macchiato de Marco, please. 
Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie small? <laughs> uh, medium. <laughs> what is biggie smalls? Big or small? Or wait, is biggie smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take the, a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. <laughs> There are cooler bands than you listen to anyway. Ouch. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Scow was once was cool once. <laughs> this couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just an just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Come on, what we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. <laughs> Hi, we're new to the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Cyrus. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet bo you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks <laughs> my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Hey. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, y you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... <laughs> Amanda nods, nods vigorously. vigorously. <laughs> she knows this game. <laughs> yeah, we need to give that banana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be... Uh... <laughs> Commensurate? Commen with Commensurate. The, uh, <laughs> I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. <laughs> I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyway. <laughs> right, yes, that. Matt serves, serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Thanks. Secret ingredient is bananas. <laughs> so, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns i might only be able to give you dead band puns but i'll give it a shot <laughs> the grateful banana bread <laughs> grateful bread uh banana bread kennedy's right said banana bread i only get grateful bread me too i don't get the others me too oh he's upset Aww. like that jam rock band fronted by jerry garcia that actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Yeah, grateful bread. Bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized <laughs> that it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. <laughs> See, it sounds good when you say it. <laughs> Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet, just for a moment. Ooh. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that dark stranger? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Uh, I should get back to packing. Unpacking. I've got a lot on my plate right now. Did you know that moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? Is it right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everyone's too <laughs> polite to tell you? <laughs> it's a real fear. Probably. Do I smell bad? <laughs> Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, Pops. Let's go home. <laughs> I like that they use this moment to introduce us to two of the daddies, but like only give us a taste of one. Oh yeah, glance. that brooding stranger. Yeah. But I, I liked that uh, 
we already get a pretty distinctive difference in personality between <laughs> these two characters. Mm -hmm. Like, Matt, was that his name at the last place? The coffee shop guy? Yeah, yeah Matt. I, I like that they try to try to kind of like set him up to be like sort of awkward, introverted type of personality. But also really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, cool, like yeah, cool, cool and, and still kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. I get to work on packing the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already. Walk over to the door and open it. Hello. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Oh my god. Hello. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Cyrus. That's what my name is. <laughs> I saw the moving van, and I thought I'd bring you over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she's baked them herself. <laughs> Joseph leans in and whispers. <laughs> But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. <laughs> well, thanks for the cookies. Ooh, Amanda disappears with the cookies. <laughs> she knows her dad. <laughs> Amanda, come... And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She is a charmer. Oh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. <laughs> I have four kids. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> oh, um, mm, I meant... Uh, don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. Oh. Is the missus around? Mr. Actually, Ender... No, not anymore. He died. Oh. oh. Uh, now it's his turn to stick <laughs> his foot in his Oh, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we've both made things. Mm. I'm sorry, can you, uh, close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. Quizzically and comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door, opening it, and I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Oh. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk to you about your dead spouse this time. <laughs> I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love uh, for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighborhood in our community. What do you say, pal? <laughs> that sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal <laughs> amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Hey. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to, uh, talk about stuff, uh... I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. <laughs> you look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. <laughs> I like that wink. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. Should be taking notes. <laughs> See, you're already fitting in great. <laughs> Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. <laughs> so you ate all of them anyway. Eh. <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> eh. <laughs> I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? <laughs> Joseph probably wants his plate back. Interesting that we have one option. I wonder if some of our choices could have offered more options. Yeah, I don't Depending know. Depending on their outcome. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. You're going to be the best or we're going to be the best neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all the neighbors' butts with kindness. <laughs> Amanda and I step aside. <laughs> Cute. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. 
Uh, I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. <laughs> we walk up to the, to the kids and wave. Huh. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to uh, return this nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these are definitely Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him, except they're creepy like this Chrissy. is a horror movie. Yeah, really. <laughs> they were really good? I mean, I heard they were really good. I didn't actually get to eat any. Hmm. Their names are Chris, Christy, and something else. I chuckle nervously. Hmm. Well, okay. We're just going to set this plate down on the <laughs> ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right. That's what we're going to do. The kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach the house. <sighs> I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. <laughs> I need to rest my eyes. You've been awake for what? Three hours? <laughs> And that's three hours too many. <laughs> All right, well, this is probably a good point to uh, call this episode. Um, <laughs> the tip was liquor before beer. You were in the clear. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> I do like their tips. Yeah, I feel fun. like they're using a, a trope of like how a lot of AAA designers try to utilize load screens by giving you tips about their game. It's like Skyrim does yeah. that. And it, Even Zelda just, does that. They're utilizing that space to just make jokes. Yeah. I'm, I'm into that idea. I feel like that's on theme with the rest of the game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what are your thoughts so far on this episode? I feel like it's probably good for us to talk about this at the end of every episode since a lot of this is just us talking, reading out loud. Yeah, I still like it's very much in the getting to meet people, still very beginning stages of the game. Yeah. Um, Do you feel like... Sorry, finish your... Th I don't mean to cut you off. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, do you feel like the time we spend with each of the, the dads is an appropriate duration? Like, does it feel like we get just enough to get a sense of who they are, what their personality is like without yeah. us being there too long? Yeah. The closest being maybe of too long would be uh, Brian with the battle sequence. But yeah. that was such a different sequence that I don't feel like it uh, was too much. It helped. It, like kept it refreshed itself by changing that yeah i think it's been good so far a good balance yeah i agree yeah and i feel like we've gotten a pretty good sense of each of their personalities yeah if if, if there was any point that left me feeling not sure about something it was actually uh blonde guys i forget his name already joseph joseph's kids like that was like a surprise yeah like we, we meet Joseph and we're like, ah, man, you seem so, like, clean cut and genuine. And then we see his kids and I'm like, is he yeah, broken not his what children? I expected. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if that's supposed to be an introduction, like, seeing both sides of Joseph or getting a taste. Or if it's supposed to, like, intrigue us or... It, I mean, it's trying to hook us in one way, right? We'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, it's weird. It definitely put it in my mind, though, that, like, what if there's a losing condition to this game? Like, well, what if you, like, end up choosing the serial killer dad and you die? Well, I was thinking, like, <laughs> if we're going from, like, a dating perspective, it gives you something of, like, I don't know if they'd be a good match because I don't know if this guy could get along with these kids. And if you're going to have oh. a blended family, you are got to get along. I mean, that's fair. That's a good way of putting it, too. Because you wouldn't just be dating the dad, you'd be dating his family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I like that spin on it. I think that's... So I'm like, I don't know if Joseph and I are compatible. Honestly, if that was the intention of Joseph Joseph's kids, I feel like that was a really smart choice from a narrative perspective. We'll find out. Yeah, wow. Okay, so then question of the day. What do you think was the intended design choice to include Joseph's kids in that moment? Yeah. Because it could, it could be anything, but... Yeah, we'll find out eventually. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for watching. Check out Dream Daddy, and if you've enjoyed this series, give it a like, and maybe subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Dream It's a very Daddy. catchy theme song. <laughs> See you in the next episode.